Maths isn't just for smart people. It teaches kids to be curious and to think critically. It also helps explain the world around us and solve global challenges like COVID-19. Many jobs of the future will require science, technology, engineering and maths. And learning these skills needs to start in the early years and be nurtured right through to university. So the Australian Academy of Science, together with Little Scientists, is launching a campaign to promote STEM education because STEM is important for everybody. Joining me today to discuss our campaign is Academy Fellow and Mathematician, Professor Cheryl Prager, who won the Prime Minister's Prize for Science last year. Hi there, Paul. Also with us today is mathematician and well-known science communicator, Adam Spencer. Wonderful to be here, mate. Now, Cheryl, uh, to begin with you, you've been a mathematician for many, many years and you've taught thousands of university students. You've also been a pioneer of women in the field of maths. Why is it important to prioritise STEM education, particularly considering the pandemic at the moment? Oh, we, we really need to prioritise STEM education because there's absolutely huge challenges facing the world. I mean, the challenges of climate change, the challenge to preserve the environment, and now with the pandemic, huge health challenges, not to mention bringing us out the other end to rebuild our economy. All of this is going to need committed, enthusiastic um, kids who are young people who are just um, ready to solve those problems in STEM, and they're all going to need strong STEM skills. And um, they need really to be passionate problem solvers. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Adam, you started a law degree before pivoting to a PhD uh, in pure mathematics. Uh, you've then, then gone on to a fantastic career in TV and radio. How have you incorporated your maths studies into the rest of your career? Well, let me start by saying your, your use of the word career is very flattering, but uh, in, in two ways. One, it is just a constant subject matter that I talk about. I love using my platform on radio and television to talk publicly about mathematics. During the lockdown, I've been doing regular breakfast segments on Triple M in Melbourne, of all places, talking about mathematical modelling and exponential growth and, and reinfection rates and, 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 and that sort of stuff. And what, what, what does the Victorian supercomputer do? How does it sample and give me a 64% likelihood, etc.? So just talking mathematics has been a big part of what I do. But without any doubt, in my time at university, when I was also at you know, world debating championships and things like that, I think like a mathematician. Even when I'm not dealing in the immediate subject area of mathematics, there's just an order and a way that I think about things that just permeates the way I see a problem, approach a problem, list all the possibilities, exclude an order of likelihood, and then focus in on it. I always, don't always get things right, but it just underpins the way I go about thinking about things. That sort of rigorous thinking model is something you can apply to many areas beyond just immediate mathematical application. It's a real life skill. And Adam, it, it, there's a real sort of logic that you can apply in the way that you would tackle a maths problem to all sorts of other problems in life, isn't there? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And life's a bit fuzzier and, and a bit more real and doesn't always have the clear yes, no answer. But if you can look at a series of options and go, look, I just think that's distinctly less likely than this to be the way we should go forward here. And okay, have we missed anything here? Let's go back and put it all in logical steps, etc. Now, sometimes when I apply that to grocery shopping, uh, it drives my girlfriend up the wall when I'm the one saying, look, I'll go and stand in the queue now. You go and get the remaining items. By the time you get back to me, I should be at the front of the queue. You get something like that wrong, it's game on in aisle four at Woolies. But as a general rule, that sort of skill set helps me move around all different sorts of occupations and, and, and arguments and discussions and conversations that I have. And Cheryl, in terms of your work, you very much look at, at patterns and apply them to help explain why the world and indeed the universe is the way that it is. Can you tell me a little bit about how you see maths everywhere and what you do? Oh, I think that there's patterns and symmetry all the way through the universe. I mean, we see it in nature, we see it in architecture. We even see it in viruses of all things in these days. Viruses, of, the simplest viruses have got, you know, 60 degrees of symmetry. And, um, and this understanding of those patterns really helps us to understand the way the world works. I've always helped that, felt that maths really helps me understand the world. Yeah, terrific. Now, Adam, you call yourself a maths geek, uh, but you didn't choose a traditional STEM career path. 
What advice do you have for kids contemplating uh, science or maths as a career? Specifically with mathematics, I say to anyone who's willing to listen, mathematicians will build this century. Whether it's in data, analytics, app design, coding, statistics, bioinformatics, this is the century of zeros and ones. It's the century of numbers. It's the century where the phenomenal grunt we now have in the devices we carry around and take it for granted is genuinely redefining the world we live in. I point out that when I was the age of high school students, in 1985, the world's greatest supercomputer was the Cray 2. If something had been proven on a Cray 2, it had been put to bed. It was the greatest computer we ever had. In 2011, Apple released the iPad 2 which had the same grunt as a Cray 2 used to have. I have a picture of a technician operating the Cray 2. He's got a little folder under his arm. If you told him in 1985 one day he'd carry something smaller than that folder with more grunt than the supercomputer, the world's greatest supercomputer that he's looking after, it would have blown his mind. The iPad 7 laughs at the iPad 2. So that's the, that's the degree of just ramping, taking off change we're seeing in the digital world, which permeates everything we do. Um, it applies similarly in so many of the other sciences, the genetics revolution, the in, in physics, you know, in 1932, we knew of three fundamental particles. One human lifetime later, we've learnt 61 fundamental particles. Now is not the time to get off the physics bus. So I say to kids, if you think you've got the potential for a life in science or a career in science, pursue that passion. Even if you don't necessarily see yourself being a lifelong scientist, if you're good at mathematics, go to university and study whatever you want and do a component of mathematics as well. Do first year, second year, third year mathematics. You might, like me, suddenly get to fourth year and realise you've fallen in love with the subject. But even if you don't, just bringing out more mathematical thinking and skill into the toolkit that you carry around here will just will carry you through the rest of your, your multi-career professional life. And Cheryl, uh, to that point in terms of falling in love with mathematics, but now we know that women make up of 16% of Australia's STEM workforce. How could we get more girls to get uh, become engaged with science and maths and encourage them to uh, fall in love with maths? Well, you're asking how to encourage girls. I think for girls to imagine themselves working in STEM, they, they have to know that they're welcome and know that there's a place for them in STEM. And part of the answer to that is visibility. So they have to see that there's some um, young women who are really excelling in and contributing in their STEM skills. And part of this starts at school and it goes through to the workforce. For example, it's just in the last three years that Australia has sent a, a team of girls to the European Girls Maths Olympiad. Um, and, and they've done extraordinarily well, even though this year it had to be virtually online. Um, but seeing girls excelling in every part of STEM is a real draw card. And we need so many girls doing STEM. Another part is to support teachers in developing their math skills. And then it's critically important for teachers to um, encourage their students to, to do well in STEM and to go on. I think we need lots and lots of different ways of approaching this problem. And, and, and Cheryl's too modest to mention it herself, but that's why her being named as the Australian Scientist of the Year, the Prime Minister's Scientist of the Year last year, was just so exciting for mathematics to be seen sitting firmly within the tent of all science and for young Aussie girls to realise that there's this inspirational woman in Western Australia who's in the absolute top rung of mathematicians around the world, in particular in her field, is just, I was so excited when I heard Thank that, you, Cheryl, and that's just gonna make dozens or hundreds of young girls think, well, why couldn't that be me one day? Yeah, it's seeing is believing, isn't it? Actually seeing the, the role models uh, and that this is a, and a fantastic career path and, a, and, a, and something that can stay with you for life no matter what direction your career might head, but it sets you up for all sorts of amazing uh, directions your life can take. Adam, you uh, participate in, in interviews on Triple M. Uh, you have uh, daughters yourself. How do you get uh, from your daughters to the audience on Triple M interested in maths? Well, for me, there's a lot. Humans are essentially curious beings. The thing that separates us from plants and dogs and other amazing things is we've got enough rattling around here to look at the world around us and go, what? what's going on? How, how, how does that work? 
that innate curiosity wanting answers, the, the three-year-old kid, but why, but why, but why? That's the essence of being human. And I think when you look at all the different skills we've got that we could look to look at the world around us, to try and understand it, to measure it, to predict it, to explain what you're seeing to someone else, mathematics and numbers is clearly the strongest tool we have. Poetry is awesome. Painting is wonderful. But in terms of actually, look at something like the periodic table, which most people think of as a collection of letters. The periodic table is a collection of numbers. And for you to have on a single chart, I think if aliens came down today and we could give them one A4 sheet, and it had to be something that most humans had seen at least once in their life, that contained the greatest amount of our knowledge, it's probably the periodic table. And it's the numbers within that that explain the building blocks of all the atoms that make up everything around. That's unbelievable. What you could, you could spend a professional life studying nothing but what is written on the periodic table and, and not exhaust your curiosity. So the ability of mathematics and numbers to tell the story of the world is unmatched. And what I try and do is just find little bits of insight that mathematics can give the ordinary person who might not consider themselves a maths geek at all and, and tell beautiful and fun stories around it. I mean, your mobile phone, your mobile phone can only give you GPS location because we understand Einstein's theories of relativity. And we understand that time is moving at a slightly different pace on the satellite up there than it is in your phone in your hand on the ground. That's unbelievable as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And I, I think when you talked about curiosity, that really is, uh, you know, finding that spark uh, seems to be part of the secret. Cheryl, just finally to you to wrap up, um, if you come across someone who uh, says, well, look, uh, maths isn't going to be useful for me later in life, uh, what would you say to them to convince them that it's actually worthwhile? Oh, I think learning, doing maths um, is such an amazing training. It trains you in clear, logical, critical thinking. And that's the sort of skill that's going to take you anywhere. Um, it, it helps you to solve problems. I mean, with really strong skills in thinking and mathematics, you'll be able to be part of the, 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 the solving of the problems that we're going to need in, in, in life. And, and I think really it's like giving you a superpower, um, a power to um, take you wherever you're going in the future, no matter where that is. And it's especially useful in STEM-based disciplines. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing this world full of new, young, creative problem solvers because that's what we're going to need. Yeah, that's a great point to end it on. Adam and Cheryl, thank you very much for your time. Absolute pleasure. Thank you, Paul. Keep up the amazing work, Cheryl. <laughs> You're a legend. And if you'd like to watch more interviews from the Australian Academy of Science, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or just head to our website, science.org.au. I'm Paul Richards. See you soon. Yeah.